streaming. Oh, okay. I saw live up in the corner, so I got confused. You are all set to go. Thank you. Thank no you. Problem. It's 6.30, and I'd like to call the meeting to order, and I will first uh, turn the meeting over to Dr. Burnham to confirm member access. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, as a preliminary matter, this is Dr. Burnham, Superintendent of Schools. I will do a roll call to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Chairperson Wendy Bertrand. Yes. Vice Chairperson Carol Shambo. Yes. Secretary Laura Kelly. Yes. Mr. Brian Leighton. Yes. Ms. Sophie Shapiro. Yes. And this evening, um, we will have a student representative with us. Uh, Nicole Lawrence should be joining the meeting. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Recording Secretary, Ms. Susan Summers. Yes. Business Manager, Mr. Michael Cassidy. Yes. Lunenburg High School Principal, Mr. Rob McGrath. Yes. And our Director of Facilities and Grounds, Mr. Londa. I don't see on the meeting yet, um, but he's anticipated to join. And I'll turn it back over to the Chair. Good evening. Happy New Year. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and is being broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel and streaming on Facebook Live, and this meeting of the Lunenburg School Committee is being conducted remotely. The Town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus, is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread and all town facilities are currently closed to the public. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A section 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. The order which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID information center page accessed through the town manager's webpage allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. <clears throat> For this meeting, the Lunenburg School Committee is convening, <coughs> excuse me, via telephone conference, video conference, via Zoom app, Facebook Live, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public can join. <coughs> Excuse me. For Zoom meetings, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Meeting business ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, Wendy Bertrand, the chair, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold off until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate meeting minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. For items with public comment after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses and I will call on each by name and afford up to three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So turning to the first item on our agenda, it is actually executive session. To conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining 
or contract negotiations with union personnel. Roll call vote. Yes. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambo? Yes. And Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. All right, I have um, made Mr. Santry co-host so that he can continue to monitor the weight room and admit um, attendees to the meeting while we're in executive session. Thank you, Mr. Santry. Thank you. You're welcome.
All right, just making sure all the committee members are back when we are. So we will move on with the next item on our agenda, uh, which is a chair's report. I do not have uh, a report this evening, so we will turn it to public comment for agenda items. So if we, if anyone has any public comment in regard to agenda items, we do have another public comment later in the meeting that is open to all, all comments. So if there are any, trying to pull that up to make sure I can see if there's any raised hands specific to, all right. If not, then I will, um, I will move on to our next item, which is um, reviewing and approving line item transfers. There and, are no, no transfers this evening. Okay. And reviewing and approving meeting minutes. And unfortunately we did not receive the minutes from the last meeting in time for tonight's meeting. So we'll move that um, to the next meeting agenda. All right, then that brings us to our superintendent's report. Okay. So once again, happy new year to everyone. Um, I'd like to give you a little bit of information on um, a new initiative that we're beginning. We are creating a copy center. Uh, this copy center is gonna be located in the library of the middle high school. The copy center will be operated by our ACE students and eventually students in our STEP intern program at the high school. The copy center will provide an opportunity for our ACE and STEP students to develop vocational skills and have some job experience. And our teachers will have some much needed clerical support uh, and ha not having to spend their time um, at the copy machine making copies, they will now have more time to focus um, during their prep periods on collaborating with colleagues, analyzing data and preparing engaging learning experiences for our students. And we hope to have this program operational in the next week or two. Um, regarding the primary school principal position, as you're aware, Mr. Adams was appointed to the primary school uh, principal position as interim uh, in December, uh, just before um, the holiday break. I held uh, forums for the primary school staff so that they could offer their perspective and feedback as to this position for next school year. Tomorrow evening, I will be holding a forum for parents to share their perspective and feedback. And this will help me determine the appropriate next steps in the process. Um, as you know, permanent appointment or opening a search are the two options that I will be considering. Comcast upgrade, we're very excited to report that the Comcast upgrade to fiber optic at Turkey Hill Elementary and Primary Schools is ahead of schedule. The last of the hardware installation should take place at the end of this week, and we hope to be up and running on our new fiber optic next week. Uh, professional development, as you know, we made an adjustment to the school calendar to allow some additional uh, professional development and planning and prep time for teachers the week prior to um, the holiday break, as well as uh, running half day um, on campus uh, sessions for students this week. And um, the interim director of teaching and learning along with our entire IT team uh, and our tech trainers have coordinated opportunities for professional development for our staff as we prepare to transition to an enhanced hybrid model, including live streaming. Demo classrooms have been set up in each building so that teachers can see the new capabilities they have with the upgraded technology. There are also Q&A panel uh, sessions scheduled, as well as sessions for teachers to share um, best practice with live streaming. Early feedback from our eighth grade teachers who piloted live streaming in December is very encouraging. They report increased time for prep and planning, um, better pacing and momentum with the um, delivery of curriculum. 
uh, as well as student interaction. And they also report less stress, which is a very good thing. And we will be eager to solicit feedback through our typical survey cycle, which will probably postpone uh, a couple of weeks so that we can get um, our live streaming underway and then solicit feedback uh, on the new model. Um, our extended day vacation week program, as you know, um, typically during uh, February and April vacation weeks, uh, we offer to uh, families who are already registered in the extended day program, the opportunity to register for um, extended day during the vacation week. Um, as you know, um, enrollment overall in extended day is low. And typically during the vacation weeks, we have a very low student enrollment, so much so that we question whether or not it's viable to, to continue to run. However, um, given that public health metrics are trending in the wrong direction, after discussion with the district leadership team at our regular monthly meeting earlier today, and I would like to just remind you that um, our health and safety officer, Katie McGuire, is part of that district leadership team. It was decided that the program uh, won't open during the February vacation. However, we will reevaluate conditions in March and make a determination regarding the April vacation week at that time. Uh, in the meantime, the director of the extended day program will be notifying the families currently in, involved in the program that we will not be running the February vacation week. And finally, I would like to conclude with um, a brief statement. Um, and I would like to start by reading our mission statement. The mission of the Lunenburg Public Schools is to provide all students with the skills, confidence, and passion for lifelong learning so that they may find their own paths to successful careers, active citizenship, and rewarding lives. What we are witnessing unfolding in Washington, D.C. at this moment is not the model of active citizenship we want for our students because it's not active citizenship. Our right to peaceful protest is a wonderful thing. Peaceful protest is one of the ways we can demonstrate active citizenship. However, the events of this afternoon move beyond peaceful protest, even beyond a violent protest. This event became an attack on our democracy, our constitutional institutions, our very way of life, intended to disrupt our democratic process and transition of power. As an educator, I have watched this event unfold with sadness, bewilderment, and anger. This is not the America I want our children to see. We are so much better than this. What we are witness to today is the result of an erosion of our long held democratic norms. In America, it does not matter what your party affiliation is. We are a nation where opposing ideas and ideologies can be expressed, discussed, and debated with passion. It is one of the many things that makes our nation great and strong. We will not always agree with the perspective of others but when engaging in spirited debate, we must always attempt to understand the perspective of others and act with respect and dignity. At the end of the day, we are Americans above all else. As an educator, this is what I want our students to learn about active citizenship. I know our teachers will help our students unpack this event in the coming days in a nonpartisan way. This moment in time is testing our nation like it has not been tested since the Civil War. I hope for all our sakes, but especially for the sake of our students, our young people, that our democracy, the greatest and most enduring democracy in the world will pass this test. And that's all I have for you tonight. Thank you. On to our student representative report. We have Nicole Lawrence with us tonight. 
before we did. Yes, I'm right here. Oh, I was going to say, I know I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can hear me, right? How are you? Yes, I'm yeah, great. <laughs> How are you? Um, okay, so starting off with the high school. Um, so each class is working on planning a fundraiser. Um, we've just recently started that. And then um, the student council candle sales um, have ended. Um, student council is also taking part in their annual polar plunge. And um, next week, students will transition to live streaming on their off days. Um, for middle school, the eighth graders who are interested in attending Monty Tech pick up um, applications in the guidance office. Um, more information will be coming from the middle school soon. Um, that's all we have for middle school. And for elementary, the students will transition into live streaming on their off days as well. Um, and then the primary quarantine assignments were given to students if they need to quarantine due to COVID. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Of course. Is new business. So we will first be looking at the revised LEA away. So we had reached an agreement with the union prior to the opening of school around what that hybrid model um, would look like um, and what the expectations would be. Um, as you know, uh, at our last meeting, um, we actually uh, learned that the teachers union um, agreed to some language around live streaming and that language has now been incorporated into the um, hybrid MOA, along with some other minor um, changes. Um, so now that revised MOA is before you and I was um, informed that the LEA ratified um, this MOA earlier this evening. So as a school committee, we look to make a vote. So I went over to our school committee members to see if there are any questions. You have, you have a copy of this MO. <laughs> any questions for Dr. Burnham or Mr. Cassidy? There are not. Uh, we did discuss um, in our at our last meeting. I don't know, Dr. Burnham. Do you want to just give um, a, a very quick recap as to any additions or changes from in this MOA? Yeah, I think um, you know, Mr. Cassidy can jump in. As can Mrs. Archambault. They were part of the negotiating team on this one. Um, the most significant change was um, to incorporate the live streaming into our um, hybrid model. So I'm now referring to our hybrid model as our enhanced hybrid model because we're adding additional um, instructional hours, live synchronous um, time on learning, which is a very good thing. Um, as you know, the, the Department of Ed um, is mandating that um, there's a minimum number of hours that must be met. Um, in addition to that, we also um, had discussion around expiring benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so um, as an example, um, paid leave um, for uh, COVID related illnesses or even childcare under these COVID conditions uh, made uh, someone eligible, uh, whereas that benefit is now expired. Um, certainly if the federal government uh, reinstitutes um, some type of benefit, um, we, would, we would happily uh, reinstate or adjust to provide that benefit. Um, other than that, I, I, I think that it was, 
much the same. Excellent, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that we highlighted or outlined for those that are viewing and, and didn't have the MOA to be able to, or, or a point of reference from previous. And so, I think the key, the key things I think that were important um, relative to the live streaming uh, were around the supports and the time for the added time for prep and planning, uh, professional development. Um, teachers wanted to be engaged in the conversation around what it would look like at their school level mm -hmm. and their grades that they teach. Um, they wanted to engage in dialogue around what attendance now looks like for students, um, you know, now that they would be logging in from home, even on their remote day for more than just a, a Google meet, it would be, you know, time throughout the day. Um, all of that, you know, was really amenable to us. Uh, it makes sense that they be engaged and involved in the decision making around what's developmentally appropriate um, instructionally for our kids. So um, again, I think um, I, can, I can speak from you know, the perspective of the school administration. Um, we think that this is a very good um, agreement. Then if there are no other questions from the committee and we have a little better perspective on those additions and changes, um, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Leighton. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we ratify the revised LEA hybrid MOA. Is there a second? Ms. Shapiro. Ms. Shapiro and I second that motion. I think we're ready for roll call vote. Ms. Shapiro. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Leighton. Yes. Mrs. Archambo. Yes. And Mrs. Bertrand. Yes. Thank you all very much. And we are also looking um, at selecting an LEA negotiation team because this agreement that we're sitting in will bring us to the end of the year. We need to negotiate. Um, typically we do a, a three-year contract, but last year in, you know, with everything being um, so transient, we went with a one-year contract. So now we will need to look at uh, negotiating again. So um, among the committee members, um, wanted to put it out there um, to see what, uh, what interest slash availability people had to work on the negotiating team. Typically in the past, we've had um, two representatives from the school committee, if we can. And any questions any committee members have um, about what that commitment would look like, Mr. Layton in. Yeah, I just had a question. I, I know the other contracts uh, were probably one year as well. I wonder if we should be assigning someone for those negotiations as well. Mr. Cassidy? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'd just like to alert the committee that we did get a notice from the custodial union that uh, they were uh, uh, looking to bargain and negotiate uh, their next contract. I got that notice today. So those requests, as Mr. Layton had um, indicated, they will be coming. Uh, so for your consideration uh, this evening, uh, if it's the will of the committee is to, uh, to assign uh, members of the committee to the bargaining group um, moving forward just for your consideration. That was an excellent point, Mr. Layton, in regarding all negotiations that are coming. So timing also plays a, role, uh, a factor in availability. Um, so typically these are late afternoon meetings. So that's something that um, will need to be considered as well. 
usually once um, teams are formed, then there's typical days of the week, you know, specific dates are identified at that point. So I don't know among the committee members who feels, we, I guess, let's start with our, our, uh, our LEA team. Since we already, Ms. Arshambo. Um, I'm happy to continue on if somebody else has the time and really wants to do it. I, you, you wouldn't have to persuade me too hard. It, it is time consuming, but um, I have an understanding of where we're at and a relationship with the team. So I'm more than happy to continue in that um, role. Anyone else? Mr. Leighton. I would just add that in prior negotiations too, we've had two committee members on. So that's definitely a possibility if other members want to do it. I've had experience on the other side as being a teacher. I'd, I'd be willing to volunteer, but if other people want to jump on, that's that would be great, I think, to get them some experience at, at the negotiation table. Ms. Shapiro. Um, I just got my class schedule and I have a lot of availability in that time for the spring and I would be really excited to serve on that um, team as well and I think I can learn a lot from Mrs. Archambeau. All right, we do and we will have other contracts that will need representation. So um, if anyone wants to put forward a nomination. Mr. Leighton. Uh, I'd like to nominate both Ms. Shapiro and Ms. Archambault for the negotiation team. Ms. Kelly. Laura Kelly, I will second that nomination. All right. Then for that team, we would take a roll call vote now. Ms. Shapiro. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Leighton. Yes. Mrs. Archambeau. Yes. And Mrs. Bertrand. Yes. Now looking at other teams, do we want to go through them all? It's typically, I think, um, custo um, our custodians as well as sometimes our secretaries or paraprofessionals tend to be a little earlier in meetings for meetings than like in the 3.30, 2.30, 3.30 time frame? So um, our paraprofessionals and our custodians have the same affiliation for representation. Um, so how things worked last year um, we actually held um, negotiating meetings with the custodial group at 2.30. And then that was typically followed by a session uh, with our paraprofessionals. Again, the same union representation out of Boston um, was present for both of those meetings. So I I would imagine since that condition hasn't changed, correct, Mr. Cassidy, um, that likely they will look for a similar meeting schedule to be set up um, as we enter or re-enter negotiations this year. All right. Um, do we have any members who are have the ability uh, to sit for that negotiation, <laughs> Ms. Archambeau. I most likely have the ability. I, I do have obligations two days a week um, with remote learning, but um, as long as it's worked around that, I can do it. Um, if somebody else is available though, they are more than welcome to do it. I would, I, I'm struggling with the time frame, unfortunately. Ms. Kelly. I'm thinking to say I have a very active and 
someone, uh, toddler who I'm just trying to figure out how to work around that. But how many times is this just once a week? Is this once every couple of weeks? How, how, what are we looking at for meetings? Well, I think typically we start uh, meetings might be every, every few weeks. Okay. Um, but honestly, you know, it gets to a point where you're trying to reach conclusion with the process and meetings may become more frequent. Or the time spent in the meeting might be a bit longer. Okay. I think honestly, with enough notice, I could potentially work around getting childcare. So I don't want Miss Arshambo to take over all of this. <laughs> you have a lot going on. Um, I can certainly attempt to help out and attempt to get a zookeeper to watch my toddler at some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then if someone would like to make a motion. Ms. Arshambo. I am happy to make a motion to have um, Ms. Kelly be the representative for um, the school committee for negotiations with the custodial and paraprofessional staffs. And is there a second? Ms. Shapiro. Ms. Shapiro and I second that motion. We'll call vote. Ms. Shapiro. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Leighton. Yes. Mrs. Arshambo. Yes. And Mrs. Bertrand. Yes. Thank you. I don't know if we want to try and do more. Or should we? I think Mr. Cassidy has something to do with that. Uh, through you uh, to the committee, there is yes. uh, the cafeteria union. Uh, we have not been approached by them yet, but uh, th their, their contract is up as well. Um, and it would be likely the same time frame um, as the, uh, the custodial, meaning uh, meetings right after uh, school lengths at 2, 2.30 and probably a lesser commitment mm -hmm. than uh, the paraprofessionals and, and the custodians. It's a smaller contract. Um, so it's not, not so many meetings uh, for someone who might want to participate. Anyone, Mr. Leighton? Yeah, I feel like I got to jump in. Yeah, I'll, I'll join that one. Uh, nobody else wants to. Awesome. Thank you. If anyone else, uh, all right, then I will, uh, I will take a motion. Ms. Arshambo. I would make a motion that um, Brian Leighton be our representative to the cafeteria worker negotiations. And is there a second, Ms. Kelly? <laughs> Laura Kelly, I will second that motion. We'll call vote. Very good. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambo? Yes. And Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you, you pers personally for me, just because it's... Yeah, life does, life does not give me a whole lot of flexibility before 4.30, 4.45. So I appreciate it. And I'm glad to know that our negotiating teams are ready to go, which is a good thing. So moving on to a uh, discussion item, MCAS requirements, Dr. Burnham. So as you know, um, under COVID conditions last year, the MCAS testing was suspended. Um, that actually required a waiver from the federal government as well as from our own state government. <coughs> so there were many modifications made to um, competency determinations for the different classes. <coughs> so Mr. McGrath is here to talk about that. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, let me 
me go back from the beginning. <clears throat> so, as Dr. Burnham said, it has been um, MCAST was was canceled um, last spring. Um, that will not be happening um, this upcoming spring. There have been some test dates and stuff moved, and, I, and I'll kind of go over that. But um, we are certainly going to be, um, as of right now, um, the last communication that we've all received from the DSE is we will be moving forward uh, with our testing. Um, I also have it kind of broken down by class to kind of try to simplify it as much as you, as you can. So. Um, it is, this is subject to change, um, you know, based on the DSE, but everything I've been hearing and talking with, you know, pretty much um, my, my principal groups, uh, we are going to be moving forward um, with testing. We don't, we don't foresee the DSE um, changing that or moving that. Um, so basically in uh, students in grade 11, class of 2022 will no longer participate in the testing during the January, February window. That was an original date. And then that, that kind of got moved. Uh, testing for this class in ELA and mathematics is going to be postponed until later in the year. Uh, grade 10, which is the class of 2022, Three will be required to participate during the spring testing window. Um, and the projected dates are typically in May, depending on public health and testing, um, you know, the, the, the situation. We all, I've been talking um, with Mr. Dion. Um, we're most likely going to be testing. We still haven't worked out all the, all the, you know, fine details, but most likely we're not going to be testing in the classroom, we're probably going to be testing in the cafeteria and the project rooms because those um, areas are already six feet spaced and we should be able to fit um, a whole class in that area. So we, sh we should be able to work that out. Uh, the dates haven't been uh, confirmed yet. Once that those dates do come out, we will be contacting the community and the students and letting parents know um, once we have those dates uh, from DESE for our testing windows. The science uh, and technology piece, um, so due to the COVID-19 closures in 2019, um, as Dr. Burnham already said, a lot of the competency determinations of students in class of 2020-23 were awarded upon demonstration of course credit and relevant subject matters. Um, only students eligible to participate in the uh, science, technology, and engineering testing uh, this school year are students in grade nine. Students in the class of 2024 must take a high school uh, science and technology test by the end of grade 10. Um, the June test is usually at the beginning um, of June, typically. It's, it's usually right at the beginning of the testing window. And the science teachers do appreciate that because they want as much time in the classroom with students as they can possibly get. So our grade nine students, the way it works at Lunenburg High School, that would be the honors bio students would be taking it um, this year. And then for the, the 10th and the engineering students, and then the 10th grade um, students um, would be the college prep bio students. So in 2021, the bio and introductory physics tests will be legacy, which are paper-based tests. Um, same thing with the chemistry and technology. Again, those are the legacy, which are the paper-based tests. Um, some other MCAS news that doesn't necessarily relate to the high school, but they will be, they are making some changes and provisions to MCAS due to COVID. Uh, they will be, uh, the test will be shortened so they don't have um, students because it is, it is difficult in some of the older buildings try to space, you know, a bunch of kids out. And, and so they are um, reducing uh, some of the time on the tests. Um, I tried to simplify it by classes. Um, Dr. Burnham helped me with this as well. Um, so the class of 2021, um, they are pretty much all set. I did have to check today for some competency determinations. I'm working through um, one. I have one email out, but for the most part, we're all set with the class of 2021. Um, so they're, they're ready to go. Um, and they just have to obviously complete their high school uh, coursework and all their graduation requirements. For the class of 2022, they will no longer be participating in the January, February window. Um, they will participate in the next generation computer, ELA and MCAST in May. So in the springtime, again, once we have those dates, I will be getting that out as soon as I have those dates to students and families. Um, and then we will, um, we will make sure if there's any competency determinations, we will, we will figure that out as well. 
the 2023 we're required to take the next generation ELA and MCAST in May. Um, and again, those dates will be determined. Um, you know, that's one thing where we're certainly, I'm certainly looking at uh, the DESI Dropbox, um, you know, almost on a weekly basis. I'm having Mr. Dion check it as well, because as soon as I have those dates, I certainly want to get those dates in the hands of our teachers for, for planning and prep, as well as the students in the community. So once, once we know what those testing dates are, we will get that out. And then the class of 2024 will be the only class participating in the science and technology testing this school year. Um, they must take a, a high school a science and technology test by the end of 10th grade. Uh, we'll take the next generation um, computer-based ELA and math MCAS. So basically the freshman class, uh, the engineering of the future, any freshman class students in the honors bio, and then it's the sophomore class, um, they'll take it sophomore year as a um, college prep bio class. So um, I wish I could give you, um, you know, more um, specific testing dates, but that, that information just, just hasn't come out yet. Once that's out, I'll be more than happy to, to share that with the community and students and teachers certainly want to get that out as, as soon as I get it um, just for planning purposes. So um you know, I, MCAST is something that, um, you know, we certainly use it as a barometer. It it's, doesn't um, tell every single fact, but it's certainly a, a good test to kind of gauge on where we're at. Um, you know, so looking forward to at least having that data point. I'm, I'm a big believer in, um, you know, having data points to, to, to move the curriculum forward. And it'll be nice to at least have that data point again to, to look at where um, we're doing well and also to look at where we need to, to beef up the curriculum. So... Any questions that I can answer or help you with? Like I said, once I get more information, I will get that out to the community and students. Thank you, Mr. McGrath. Uh, no problem. I'm scrolling down. I didn't miss any questions, did I, from the committee? No. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Water testing results. So I'll Mr. invite uh, Mr. Landa. Uh, good evening, John Landa, Director of Facilities for Ludenberg Public Schools. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen with you. And I know that um, Liz is on the meeting. Maybe Liz, um, can you share screen with John's slides? Yeah, I'm gonna try to pull it up. not allowing me to pull it up. You do have screen share capacity. Um, okay. Share. No? That's yep, not it. Yep, yep. We can see your screen. Okay. Now let's see. Can you see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay, sorry for the technical difficulties. Okay, so um, this is the, really the first time I think that I've gone into any discussion about uh, the water testing program. 
uh, with the school committee. So I've kind of expanded to be more than just the test results. It's kind of the overall program. And uh, just going to give you an idea of where we stand, uh, where, uh, what kind of results we've had, why we're doing this, and also, uh, you know, um, where I think we're going in the future. Uh, so the background on this, you know, the next slide. So the reason we started into this, we had parents asking, what are, what are you doing about water testing? And, uh, you know, the, this was about four or five years ago. And really all I could say was, well, you know, we, we do have the water tested. Uh, it, the Lunarburg Water District tests, uh, tests water for us. Uh, but they were only testing two points in the whole school district. So typically they might do a kitchen sink and a, a water bubble or somewhere uh, at, in, two, uh, two schools. And that would be the extent of the testing. And then the water district, uh, you know, had gotten uh, the, the authorization from the mass DEP to reduce the amount of testing that they were doing. So now, then we were not getting them testing every year, but we were getting every other year. So, you know, we really didn't have a lot of data on, on water and water in the building. So we, in spring of 2018, we applied for a grant to develop a water testing program for the district. Uh, we got that grant and along with mass DEP, uh, and UMass, we we uh, launched into this uh, this uh, water testing program, and uh, it, it all comes under this uh, Lead Contamination Control Act (LCCA). And uh, the the parts of the the grant in, included going around uh, with a representative uh, from uh, from UMass and test and getting a baseline of where all of our water uh, sources were for drinking water. Uh, now that was the water points where, you know, where we might expect somebody to fill a water bottle uh, or uh, to drink directly from a fountain. Uh, but it, it didn't include things like, you know, the art classroom sinks. It didn't include science labs. Uh, it was focused on places where you could expect somebody to actually physically drink out of, or if we're, we're using the water for cooking. So uh, we identified all those spots. They were entered into a uh, database that the L -L LCCA management program. Uh, and we did that for all of our active schools. We also added the Pasios in and did that one and a hundred percent of that one as well. And then as part of that grant, we did a hundred percent testing of all those sources. Uh, in June of 2018, uh, but part of you know going this direction was to make a commitment that we continue testing. So we have a commitment to test about a third of our water sources every year, uh, and and we've been doing that. So the potential places that we're going to see lead potentially come into water, uh, we get very good quality water uh, from the uh, from the water district. Uh, there isn't any lead coming into the school from the water that's pumping our way. Uh, it is, it is uh, a function of, uh, you know, the interaction of the water with the plumbing system in the school that, that is the, the big concern for, for, for lead. Now, we don't have any lead pipes either on the way coming in or throughout the school. The school pretty much has copper pipes everywhere, uh, and, but it does have uh, some of the older schools, uh, the solder that joined various pipes together uh, did have some lead in the solder. And uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, lead solder was banned back in 1989. Uh, you know, we have two schools that were operating uh, or two, two buildings that, that we have students in uh, that are much older. So, you know, Tasios Elementary School from 1952 and Turkey Hill uh, from 1969. So we think you know, there's a fairly good chance that there's lead solder used in that in that building. Uh, and but oh, and the other thing we're concerned about is is the plumbing fixtures, the faucets, water bubblers, things like that. Uh, and there the concern is 
know, these are fixtures that are made of brass and a brass would have some lead component in it. Uh, nowadays you get lead, lead free plumbing fixtures, uh, which means really that they, they have less than 8% uh, lead included in that fixture. Uh, and, and finally, so we have all these lead fixture, uh, the solder that we're concerned about, we have the fixtures. When we test, uh, and I'll talk about testing procedure in a, in a moment here, uh, we, you know, we're, we're collecting uh, a sample right away and then we're drawing a, a flush sample. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So our testing procedures. So we are testing uh, water samples that come from the facility. And uh, it's, once again, we're not really worried about the water coming into the building. That's very high quality water. However, um, it does, if it sits in the line, it's in contact with uh, the, the, the materials of the fixture, of, of the pipe, of, the, of any lead that might be in the solder. And, and that's when we see, could see, you know, some minerals or lead and concern about, you know, leaching into the water. And the longer it sits, the more, more time it has to do that, the higher the concentration. So uh, our testing says that we will test, um, that the water will sit at least eight hours, but not more than uh, 18 hours. And in our most recent testing, what we set, set the, uh, the approach as is to draw the sample uh, of one or two schools uh, each day. And we, so we started to spread this out. Uh, we took the maximum uh, stagnation time, 18 hours. So we're just giving you our worst case scenario. And so we would flush one day and, um, and then we would draw the, in the morning the next day. And that gave us the 18 hours. And so that's the worst case scenario for testing for us. The, uh, the other part on this, and we just say that, uh, you know, th that tw the uh, 2020 testing, uh, we were, I was very concerned about that because we know we shut the schools down on March 16th. They were, they were not used, you know, throughout the springtime and we were going to test again in June. We had to make sure that we did a good job flushing every, anything we were going to test so that so that we knew, hey, the water in that, that uh, pipe had been emptied out and uh, new water was sitting in there. So we did a very good flushing job uh, before we did through the last set of samples. Uh, we collect these with a chain of custody. So you know, all of what we're going to test is identified. It goes down, recorded by location, recorded by time it's drawn, uh, and then it's delivered uh, directly to uh, Rhode Island Analytical, who's doing our testing, they are a mass DEP certified water tester. And then they will forward the results uh, to the LCCA management program. And that's when and they get should get loaded up. There are some issues with that. And I'll, I'll let you know about that when we get a little further along. Have the next slide, please. So on this chart, you're going to see a couple of different, uh, four different columns. So the, the very first column, the 2018 lead results, uh, it shows for the, list, the results for greater than 0 0.015 milligrams per liter of lead. And that is also referred to as 15 parts per billion. Okay, this was the 100% testing results. And you can see we tested 59 water sources at Lunenburg Middle High School, we had no, we had no results that exceeded that that 15 parts per billion. That 15 parts per billion uh, was considered Massachusetts action level for lead in water. Uh, and you can, as you go down there, you can see uh, we had quite a few at, at Turkey Hill. We had none at Lunenburg Primary School and we had 17 at the Pasios. The, coming out of that, when we got those results, uh, I said that's, this was in June of 2018, we got the results during the summer. Uh, when everybody came back to school in August, 
Uh, they all got notifications that, hey, look, we have this concern. And we identified where those points were. Uh, and we asked all the teaching staff and the custodial staff to ensure that they flushed their faucet, their bubblers, uh, for a minimum of 30 seconds at the start of every school day to get water that was sitting in there out. Um, we, we've, we found in that 100% that testing that there places where we did have a problem uh, on the initial draw, uh, you know, that, that the subsequent flushed sample that was taken uh, were, was below that point, uh, point zero one five milligrams per liter. So, you know, we, we recognize that the flushing does work, uh, and, but it's important to, to think about that we do that. Uh, we have periods where, because we have periods throughout the school year where we're closed for, you know, two, three, five days. Uh, we, you know, we're closed for an extended period uh, during the summertime. So these are areas where water can be sitting. So, you know, that flushing is very important. In June of 2019, we came back and resampled. This was our first time to do a one third uh, resampling of points. We, we looked back at the 2018 results to help identify, well, what places do we wanna go test? So we kind of picked some spaces based upon, okay, well, this didn't do well, let's go back and retest it. Uh, so the, the results there, once again, you see the high schools continue to have no, nothing in the, above the, the 15 parts per billion. Uh, we did have continued issues at Turkey Hill and at the Pasios Elementary School. Uh, the primary school had no issues with lead. However, we did see a, a, a large number of points at Lunenburg Primary School that had high copper readings. And why that's significant is uh, it points, pointed to an issue with the corrosiveness of the water that was coming from the water district. So we went back to the water district, showed them our results. Uh, they went back to the mass DEP, who, you know, who they you know, uh, do their testing with and report to. And uh, they got uh, authorization to, to uh, raise the pH level of the water that they're sending out. And that's something they do back in their treatment facility before it comes out to us. Um, so, uh, so that was one of the fallouts from, from the, the testing results uh, was them to raise the pH so it would be less acidic uh, and therefore be less corrosive on the, on the pipes and on the solder joints and on, the, on, and on all the metal. In June of 2020, once again, there was, we, we wanted to get more data. We thought it was important to get more data. Uh, once again, we knew that we were going to have an issue because of the lack of use of the school. Uh, so we had a very, very, we said we expanded the number of days that we did the, the, the testing on, the draws on, and uh, we made sure we were flushing everything that was the day before we were gonna draw the sample. Uh, so the good news is uh, the, the, you know, we definitely got, uh, you know, I think some pretty decent results uh, by having better quality control on the flush. But we did have, you know, at least one point at Turkey Hill and one point at uh, Lunenburg Primary that came up above that, that, that uh, 0.015 uh, level. In 20, 2020, the other thing that has was going on is the state's been looking at uh, where where we all should be with this issue of lead in the water, and what they've object uh, set up as a goal is to have uh, have no lead show up in the water. Now, their low the lowest testing level, the minimum testing level, uh, is 0 0.001. Uh, you know, so now that's a substantial difference between this action level. So we did have, we, when we got those results, the results, this is what we had. So we had three points at Lunenburg Middle High School that were at, uh, you know, were above 0 .001. Uh, the highest one was at 0 .0024, 
but we had those, so we flagged them and we're tracking them. And uh, once again, we you know sent out in response to this, we've sent out letters to the to the uh, the staff, the occupants, uh, the parents, to so let them know, hey, look, we've got an issue. We want to make sure that we're flushing the water because uh, once again, it, there's periods when it sits. Uh, Turkey Hill, uh, we had 13 that, that were above that level. Uh, this summer we replaced, I believe it was six or seven faucets in Turkey at Turkey Hill. Uh, we also did m- much of the close in plumbing to the, to the fixture, new stops, uh, new joints going up to the faucet. Uh, so, so, so on those, uh, so we have, uh, we'll be having to come back to those at another point, but we think we've taken remedial, remedial action on those 13, or, or on most of the 13, but not every single one of them. But um, Lunenburg Primary School, we had four, and the postulates continues to have, you know, nine out of 10 uh, still have an issue here with, with that lead level being higher than we would like. Uh, we have passed that. Can I have the next slide, please? So the remediation, once again, was to coordinate with the, the water district. And so we did that particularly around the issue of the corrosiveness uh, in 2019, uh, notifications to parents, staff, and occupants, that 30-second flush at the start of the day. Uh, we will continue to be doing retesting, uh, particularly if we're uncertain if, if, uh, if the flush was well done. Uh, that was, I think, a concern, co- particularly coming out of 2018, when we tested all the all the test points in one day, and uh, you know, so you know, we, we, but we will be do continue to do retesting. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, selective replacement of fixtures, and where we can, we want to do replacement of the near in pl- uh, piping. Uh, that would be including, you know, shutoffs, any elbows. Uh, joints, any connections. Once again, that's what the idea of trying to get out. That's particularly with uh, Turkey Hill Elementary School, try to eliminate any sources that might be near the fixture uh, that would be potentially a point where you know, a, a solder might le- leach some lead in. And then to continue to monitoring the water conditions. So uh, we will be continuing to do uh, testing. We will be doing testing again here in June. Uh, and so I think we're going to be in the kind of a uh, test, evaluate, uh, take action, uh, provide more notification. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the LCCA management program, uh, this is the web address. Uh, what currently, if you, if you go on to uh, the, the state website, uh, you can see all of our 2018 uh, drinking water uh, testing results. Our, our 2019 didn't get posted, uh, but, and they are in the process of trying to get 2019 posted. Uh, and 2020 was partially posted. The high school got posted, the others didn't. And once again, they are trying to get that straightened away for it. Uh, any remedial remediation actions we've taken has been posted to the, that as well. Uh, next slide, please. So once again, our next next steps will be continued selective replacements to continue. Uh, next testing in June of 2021. Uh, we, we may at that point, uh, we've been testing for both copper and lead. At that point, we may just go to lead, uh, the copper, uh, I'm told is just not a really a concern. Uh, although, once again, we do get some information from it. We found out, like I said, from 2019 that, that you know, the water district might look at uh, dealing with corrosion control a little more aggressively. Uh, we have passed this information on to the Pasios Design Committee uh, as that school goes, as that building goes into some kind of renovation uh, in the future years. You know, they're going to need to really look hard at uh, pl- changes to the plumbing system at the Pasios. And then finally, uh, community outreach. And, and so uh, a lot of the, this information about where you can find information about lead and copper in your water uh, are, is, is on the, the school district's website. Uh, you know, we are not any different in some respects 
or much different in some respects than the average homeowner in Lunenburg. Uh, probably drawing the same water from the same uh, primary, uh, primary water source in the town. Uh, you, you might have uh, plumbing that's as old, if not older than the school district has uh, and the interaction between the water and your plumbing in your house could be causing the same results. Um, you might not be doing the testing on it, but uh, but we, I, I would say at this point, we have a, a pretty good feel for what's going on. We, we are working through uh, corrective actions and uh, we'll be continuing to monitor this uh, in coming years. Uh, at this point, if you have some questions, I'd, I'd love to be able to answer them. Mr. Leighton. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Londa, for the detailed uh, presentation. I did want to ask um, about um, the school building. So obviously the TC Passios and Turkey Hill, they are older than 1989 date with the, the lead. Um, with the newer schools, is there a hypothesis of why the, the lead is showing up in some of the tests? You know, you know I, I think, you know, the fixtures do get, when they get used, uh, they said it's this issue of a brass fixture and some corrosion. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing minor levels of lead, but it, it's probably coming from the fixture itself. Uh, at the high school, we said we only had three. We only had three fixtures that were above that point, point zero zero one, uh, they, and they were just barely above. But, but, uh, you know, I think what we're going to be doing with the high school in particular is just, you know, tracking to see where they go. So we, when we do one third testing, uh, we may be coming back to the same fixtures, uh, those same three fixtures, and seeing how they're doing. If we get multiple readings on them, you know, and it continues to get to not get better, uh, then that will be a, a one that says, "Well, we'll just replace that." Uh, we're, you know, we have uh, our maintenance staff is is capable of replacing uh, plumbing fixtures. We have uh, one of our maintenance persons, uh, you know, was a licensed plumber, uh, so you know, we we can do something. We can't like completely redo the school, but, but we certainly can be going after specific problem areas. And I think that's kind of the approach that makes some sense. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Thank you, Mr. Lander for, yes, a very comprehensive and clear presentation. Thank you. Moving on to old business, uh, second reading um, of policies. So we have uh, several policies up for second read, uh, including regulations governing the use of school facilities, 5204, promotion and retention of students, 5805, student photographs 6509 public participation at school committee meetings uh so typically mr leighton i was going to make a motion to waive the second reading i'll take a second i was going to say typically we waive the second reading as well but thank you and ms shapiro uh, this is Sophie Spear, and I second that motion. I think we're ready for a roll call vote. And just for the record, before the vote, um, there's been no feedback. Um, Thank you. I, yes, I usually ask that there, if there has been any feedback from the first reading. And on the third reading, we will read through each policy. Um, then we will... Then I think we're ready for that uh, roll call vote. Okay. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambo? Yes. And Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Um, we are now up to public comment, open to any topic the school committee governs. Ms. Archambo? Um, thank you. 
I would like to make a public comment regarding the addition and expansion in the area of civics to our curriculum that we have recently done. At no time in modern US history has it been more important to understand the workings of our democracy. Our mission statement does include the importance of active citizenship. An understanding of the US Constitution and our rights as citizens for active participation in government is vital to the health of our republic. I want to thank the staff members um, on our staff for their work in this area. Thank you. And I'm not seeing any other public comment. Let me just look for any hands over along the side. I'm not seeing any. So we are moving on to our reports, Athletic Advisory Committee. We have not met. We plan to meet on February 1st uh, in preparations for the football and cheer seasons, the special spring. Finance Committee. Uh, they are meeting on the 14th. Policy Subcommittee. We have not met. PTO. Um, we have not met since uh, the, our last school committee meeting, but the next meeting is this coming Monday, the 11th. School councils. Primary school. Not met since last time we met as a school committee, but the next meeting is also next Monday, the 11th. And Turkey Hill. Turkey Hill met on December 21st. Um, we had a Title I presentation by Ms. Hyde, and we also had a curriculum update by Ms. Scott. Uh, the, the staff and the administration are, are very excited to have Ms. Hyde and Ms. Scott working with them and uh, helping them be a little bit more successful as uh, we go through the year. And the middle school? Uh, they haven't met since our last meeting. And the high school. High school also has not met since our last meeting. Capital planning. Capital planning has met uh, the last two weeks, uh, finishing reviewing all of the capital projects that were presented uh, before them uh, this fall and have ranked all the projects that were put forward as well. Um, so they probably won't, we won't meet again, um, probably for a little bit, uh, but looking to have a joint meeting with, uh, FinCom as the, um, capital planning committee is hopeful that we might be able to change the, um, the base amount for, for what's considered a capital project. Mm -hmm. It's fairly low. It hasn't been reviewed in a long time. Um, so definitely looking to see, get FinCom's thoughts on that, uh, to see if some of those lower budget projects in that $5,000 range or so should just be considered, you know, absorbed within uh, that entity's operating budget. Uh, so uh, next meeting will be February 2nd for capital planning. Wellness. Um, I was just, um, I just got an email from Katie McGuire this week, um, and we are going to be starting to have those meetings uh, very soon, pretty much once we decide on a date. So? Um, they are meeting tomorrow evening, so I'll have more on that the next time we meet. So. Passios Building Design. Yeah, we had met on December 17th. Uh, we started talking about more specifics like toilets and flooring, <laughs> um, entryways and accents. Um, we also uh, talked about the parking and the repaving uh, areas and sidewalks um, to make it flow, flow nicely. Uh, we're going to continue to meet and discuss a lot of those uh, minor details. Uh, we're meeting again on January 13th. Excellent. And the lifelong learning advisory has not met since uh, since our last school committee meeting. Topics for future discussion. 
anyone have? All right, then I will take a motion to adjourn at 8.07. Anyone, Ms. Archambeau? Um, this is Carol Ashambo, and I would move to adjourn. Second. Ms. Shapiro. Sophie Shapiro, and I'll second that motion. I think we're ready for a roll call vote. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambo? Yes. And Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Have a good Thanks, night, everyone. everyone. Have a good, good evening. Night.